making your way in the world today you really need a pod why don't you put your headphones in and give this one a shot wouldn't you like to just listen away and go to a place where everybody knows who you are listen to two guys brew ha ha cold street brewery and full buddy cast two of the greatest names why don't you go and listen to this episode all right, everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Brew Ha Ha, brought to you by Full Buddy Cast and Cole Street Brewery. We've got the Brewmeister, Meister Brewer, CEO, President, also the customer, Sean McDonald with us as usual. Sean, what's up? Good evening. Good, good evening. Good evening. Good morning. We're hit good evening and good morning. Depending yeah. on what you guys when you guys are listening. Yeah. Hey, good morning and good night. Yeah. Uh uh, we've got uh, this is called Brew Ha Ha. About 13, 14 something episodes in. What this is, is just us getting together. Uh, two guys from the same town, graduated around the same time uh, several years back. Well, for me a lot. You're still 29 and a half. 27 and a half. Oh, you keep going. Wait, no, it's, it's always, always been a twi- 27 and a half. Dang it. Yeah. It's and been a long half It's year. been a while. Maybe I was maybe I was like your sixth grade camp counselor or something like that. Sure. That's probably where, where we know each other yep. from the past. Um, and then we what we do is just talk about his brewery, obviously Cole Street Brewery. We talk about some brews. We have a beer, beer of the week. And then we get into some conversations, topics, and uh, then we just kind of see where it leads from there. The last one was definitely a very drunken episode <laughs> that was fun that was like the that was like the 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 that guy a long one that you're ready to get like, okay time to go home buddy we, we almost did that again on the holiday on the holiday <laughs> but then we decided it might not be the best idea <laughs> all right well it's good to have you back in the lab let's all drink right. yeah so i i got a uh I got some messages from some of our listeners on oh, good. questions, and that's good. why what I wanted to start with. Oh, so I haven't kind of presented the beer because you're whole... really you're really good at uh, throwing. Look the, at you the over hot, here, the hot the coal, hot coals hot coals at me. You're so like I have a hot coal for you. Whoa, what is this? This is called a bandana. Uh huh. It's one of those things you can't see through. So yeah, yeah. If you just put it over your face. Oh, so okay. Uh, oh, our so listeners I'm, can't see okay, this. Okay, so I'm blocking. But... I'm blocking my eyes. Yes, I hope. Yeah. This came out of his, like the back of it. I, I swear it might have been in his butt crack. So I'm a little, little right. nervous. So uh, right now we're gonna we're gonna open a very famous beer, and we're gonna have Travis try it. Uh, is this a Cole Street famous beer? No, this is a very common beer. So we're just gonna have you blind taste test it and give your kind of perception of it, because a lot of people have. Not the correct perception of it. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're pouring it. Okay, you're pouring it into a glass that I, I we usually will, you know. Chink and start. Yes. We can cheers after this. The clay, the, the clink, clink and start. All right. All right. So, so smell I'm not it. looking at it. So smell it. Okay. Smell it first, of course. Let's see if I have COVID. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then take yourself a sip. Okay, I can smell it. Kind of judge, like, what flavors are you tasting? And then tell me, like, how strong it is and what the what the telltale flavors are. Like, what does that taste like? He's, to, he's still analyzing. To me. Beer connoisseur over here. It, it has a little bit of a, uh, like, a darker, like a, like a Guinness type. But it also tastes like a lager at the beginning. I'm going to say like a Guinness. Okay. Okay. And how strong do you think it is? It's not the strongest Guinness. It's one that I would actually probably prefer. So it's it's sometimes the, the my, when my mom gets out the old St. Patrick's Day, gets this Guinness, and I'm like, oh, that's a little too too much. Uh, this is not as, not as Guinness-y. <laughs> not as Guinness-y. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uncover your eyes. Okay. We'll see. Ooh, okay. Look at you, Mr. Blind Taster. You're actually <laughs> pretty good at judging beers. So I did open a bottle of Guinness. Okay, all right. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was um, stouts. So okay, uh, not our. So our last podcast we did uh, a stout, and the one before that we did a porter. And there was some discussion about the difference between a porter and a stout. 
a lot of people always talk about how heavy a stout is. They're like, yeah. I can't drink it. It's going to be so right. heavy. It's going to be so strong. Right. You know, I don't want to start with that. I want to I want to drink like the Pub Light, which and is then, super light and has less alcohol. Well, I, I wanted you to try it and start with a Guinness. Okay. That everybody assumes that this beer is super heavy and it's right. super strong, right? But you, you know, you're blind tasting. You're kind of like, well, it's pretty light, but right. Good call on calling it a Guinness. You can tell because it's got that nice mouthfeel, kind of yeah. soft. Right. It's an Irish dry stout. Um, but I wanted to point out that this beer, I'm trying to look for the alcohol content, but the alcohol content should only be like four and a half I or think five percent. It's like right below that. Uh, the, air, the is it by the barcode? I thought I saw it. Like right below the barcode. What's that there? No, that's uh, recycling. <laughs> you can recycle you get five in cents? different states. Yeah, sweet. You get ten cents in Florida, oh, Oregon, wow. and, Mich- and Michigan. That's why everyone goes to Florida nowadays. They've just been <laughs> so drinking all pandemic, and they're just loading up their cars with uh, bottles and cans that they're going to get make major money on in Florida. I might do that, or we might look it up online. <laughs> here, hand that over here because I'm going to look. At, I'm going to look at it while, while you look it up online. If you have your phone, if not, no big deal. I don't have my phone. Um. It is it is five cents. Don't you don't you have to put it on here? No, you don't. What? Mm-mm. It's established. It was established seventeen fifty nine. Oh 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 oh. There's yeah. cal- there's calorie counts yeah, you, and all kinds of stuff. You think on that the you're gonna find it? Alcohol. Actually, there's stuff that you don't even like. You're like, I don't even need this on here. Well, it's actually, like the website, <laughs> <laughs> and it's talking about calorie count to try and you know. Just prove like everybody thinks they're going to get fat off of it too. I mean, calorie count is one twenty six. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, we can't find it, but anyway, if you look it up, it's only four. It's between four, four, four percent and five percent. It's actually super low. Oh, really? And everybody always automatically assumes that it's a super strong beer. It's kind of like the American perception when they see something dark, they They automatically assume it's heavy. Yeah. Now there is barley wines and. Yeah, barrel aged stuff. Okay, you can't ever argue with that. Th- that stuff is always going to be super strong and super high in alcohol, strong in flavor, high in alcohol. But other than that, most stouts are actually pretty light, like super light. So, am I going to do a do like a comparison test now? Well, no, I didn't make this. So <laughs> the beer, the beer of the week is um, is my uh, my coffee stout, which is a milk stout. Oh, so, it's, so it's this. this? So this is going to be way different from Gu- not way different, but quite a bit different because Guinness is a dry stout, a dry Irish stout. I, I haven't had this yet, have I? No, you have not. No, I think of course not. The other episode, it's the, the beer of the week, right? I think the other episode, the, the it was uh, wish I was on an island. Yeah, I I, I, I described co- it coconut and as pineapple. like a very brown, almost chocolate milk. Yeah. This, no, is, no, the, this is like and a chocolate This milk. is just like a chocolate milk. So this one has lactose in it. So disclaimer, this has a couple things in it that has to be put on the label. It has a lot of lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, you okay. can't drink this beer. Can't drink it. It also has uh it also has cocoa nibs in it, you know, chocolate, real chocolate, which means that there's caffeine in it. So if you're allergic to caffeine, you can't have it either. Okay. Uh, so those two things. What's the ABV? This one's only five percent. So, so it's simple. Yep. Uh, wow, I can't wait to taste this. All right, so I'm going to give you my... But it's my a true, milk stout, so the, the mouthfeel is way different. My true my true test here. Clear the palate with my burp. Wow. <laughs> what do you think it tastes like? <laughs> okay, so it tastes like chocolate milk. It really does. It does, right? And then it moves into like a, almost a, a fruit. Like not a not a hard fruit. Oh, okay. But like wait, here, let me try it again. Everybody's palate's a little different. Yeah, it reminds me of like that raspberry chocolate like thing that you would get at Christmas. Like someone gets buys you or or even Valentine's oh, Day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like the. So I'm telling you right now, guys, mm. Valentine's Day is coming up. <laughs> this is the beer to get. I would say. Right. Yeah. So I normally do a chocolate stout for. Um, for February for um, Valentine's Day, mm. I don't know if I'm going to actually have a full full fledged cho- chocolate stout. Right, um, that takes a lot of chocolate. I only had a little bit of cocoa. Is cocoa nibs are a little spendy right now, so or is it just just does, in, does it go up and in, down in general? Okay, it's, uh, a little spendy. So that's where this has coffee in it. So I I could just mix in the coffee. Dude, and this not is have to good. Use as much chocolate. Yeah. Do you ever have it on tap? This it, will it, this it's, will it, this will be on tap. Yeah. Does it sell out fast? Uh, it sells really good. Yes. Yeah. Um, but. but this is, again, this is the misconception where everybody's like, oh, it's a stout. It's super heavy. I can't have too many of them. I'd like to argue that this is 
pretty sweet beer. Mm. You know, it, it's just like a fruit beer. You know what I mean? If you're into sweet stuff, you can drink a lot of it. But Man, that's going to ruin my dinner. Really that's like one. having dessert. <laughs> it's like a beer dessert. It's good. Mm. This thing would be good for... Okay, now I know it sounds weird, but do you ever warm it up? Yeah, so this that's been talked about too. Um, the problem with warming it up is, you know, everybody's got to, ha- especially Americans, got to have it as cold as the mountains, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it goes against the whole American beer concept. Yeah, so you, it's okay to drink warm beer. I have no problem with it. What's everybody th- complains about that in England. I went to England. I, I thought their beer was fabulous. Now, I would probably warn this. Like, if it was snowing out and I had this. This would be my, like, I might try warming it up, you know, go I have... just sit ambient temperature, sit it on the counter. That's which, good, too. Yeah. That way it's, you know, it's not cold. But yeah. It's, it's not warm, either. Um, dude, this is, that's delicious. Right. That is delicious. So, so you say that sometimes you'll have a warm beer. Yeah. What's your, what's, like, the best tasting warm type of beer for you, or what? Oh, uh, well, I, I think all ales are better warm. They should be warm. Um, you know, like... No, when I say warm, I'm room talking temp, like, like a I'm little, talk, little bit, a little bit under that, like yeah. six, like fifty eight, sixty degrees. Okay, you okay. Know? Um, you know, but obviously stouts that are, have have a lot more flavor in it. Um, that's that's where also your uh, barley wines and stuff like that. It's it's closer to a wine, and wine would be an ambient temperature, not a cold temperature. Yeah. So those are another good beer to have at more of a warm temperature, because then when you open it and pour it in the glass, it opens up more and that takes away some of that bite. Like a lot mm-hmm. of those have a lot of bite to them. That alcohol, that really, really strong kind of molasses flavor, um, opening it up and letting it kind of warm up will, will definitely help that. It'll kind of make it settle to the bottom. So, you know, when you get farther in the glass after you're intoxicated, then you can handle, <laughs> handle that flavor. Uh, well, that was delicious. And I'm going to, I'm, it is delicious. I'm going to probably <laughs> drink the heck out of that. Uh, so, and you can, it's sessionable. I'm, I'm, what's, uh, uh, now I don't, I, you know, I get into like podcast brain where I've got topics and I want to just jump right in and dive into stuff. But sure. is that you said that you had, a, so was that the surprise or was there a little bit more? I just want to step on your toes. So, yeah. So that was kind of just talking about that in, um, in beer terms. Yeah. Uh, like the progression. So, you know, we, uh, a couple of weeks ago and still on tap, we have our Porter, okay. um, Porter, you know, it's an English style. That one's definitely got a little more bite to it because it's got a lot more coffee notes to it. That one does not have coffee in it. It's just the, the roast is a really, really roasted, yeah. uh, uh, grain. Um, and then different stouts, you, you know, everybody thinks that it's super heavy. I just wanted to throw out there that it's really not that heavy. It's they're, not that heavy. They're not, they're a, a true stout. Now an imperial stout is going to be, it has imperial in the name. That means it has more alcohol in it, but any other stout is actually not very high in alcohol. It'll never be, you know, 7% at the highest. Most IPAs so, average 7%. Wait, so, so why is that? Why is it? It's the style of beer. It's is just, it how it's put together? I mean, is it, yeah. is it like how you, I want to say bake it, but obviously you're not baking it. You're fermenting it's how it. how you brew it. Brew it. There brew you go. That's a good, you know what? That's You should, you should uh, like, take that and trademark that. That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, so is it, is it, does it get burnt? Like, does it, is it a high heat? Does it burn off alcohol? I mean, like, like what? Not necessarily, but it is, uh, it does take a lot, you know, it's a darker beer, so it has a lot um, more dark malts to it. And like I said, it's kind of the, gotcha. the kind of the perception. You see a dark thing and you just, our minds automatically think it's going to be really heavy when really it just took all that color from the grain and put it in the liquid. The liquid didn't really change how, how, how thick it was. Everybody's like, oh, I can put a spoon in it. And, you know, I can eat it. That's that's very rare. Yeah. That's, you know, that unless somebody's really trying for that, and that's like an imperial stout or like a, a barley wine or something that's a higher alcohol, like a really big bodied something, not a stout. Not never a, stout. a stout. Okay. Never a stout. No. Always. <laughs> always go by taste, too. I was, I was Don't th- have a perception until you try it. You never know until you try. I was thinking that always a, a bridesmaid, never a bride. Uh, so always a what, never a stout. What would you say? Always fill that in. Always uh, a good beer. Never oh. a. St- <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I was know. going. I was reaching there. I I got nervous. Speaking of people that just got married and bridesmaids, and you know, uh, shout out Krista K and Matte. We talked about oh, them. Yeah, yeah. I got nervous because it it the last episode, and I love this drinking episodes uh, where, <laughs> but it turned into for me as I'm editing it. Like, believe it or not, guys, I cut a lot of what I set out. Believe it or not, I cut a lot of, <laughs> like, I was going on and on, and 
So I wanted to kind of like let them know, like, hey, because we're friends on FB, and I'm like, hey, talked about you guys a little bit, yeah, yeah, and uh, and but then I got a little like nervous, and I was like, that wasn't our best step. Well, every episode is our best episode, so but we're gonna take these and put it in our our bloopers. Our blooper, yes, we're gonna have a blooper reel. Yes, a bunch of bunch of blooper. These these are the blooper reels where we got (laughs) way too (laughs) into the beer. (laughs) And I let let us know, like the people that listen, obviously Holly and Eric and yeah, questions. Let us know questions, questions, but also, yeah. do you guys like every once in a while just like that, like this has gone off the rails drunken episode? Like not every time, but like every once in a while, or do you like the full on like beer geek it out? Beer geek it out. I want to know. I can get. I can get yeah, pretty see, geeky. And I don't know how geeky people. Want I want to get geeky a little bit. I like the geek, the geekness of it because I like to know the science. I like to know that it doesn't have to be some like twenty minute of how you brew something, but. Just the the behind the scenes. What do, what do, like? What's the difference? And we'll get to that. Not right now, but just oh, think I, about. We can it. talk about stouts. I mean, we're still on the stout subject. Okay, well, let's talk about. So we the just stouts, talk. Yeah. We, we can talk about what I just made here. So I okay. made you know a coffee uh, cocoa nib stout. So obviously, I have to um, take my base malt and I basically kind of soak that, heat that up. Uh, that's how I'm grabbing some sugar so I can yeah, get some alcohol good. in there. This is good. Um, and then then I add in some dark malts to kind of. Uh, balance the color out you know i need to darken it up a little bit um once i add uh because once once i add that lactose that's why it's it's really foggy it's you know it looks like chocolate milk that's from lactose um i just have like a grain lactose that really it just, just really fogs stuff up, it up and, yeah um uh but prior to that then i take my coffee I crush up my coffee just like you crush up coffee to brew coffee, mm-hmm. and I, I put it in a uh, in a bag so that I don't get the grains everywhere. And then I, I kind of soak that as I'm passing the beer from the uh, from the mash tun into the boil kettle, and then boil it off in there. Sometimes I check my I check how much coffee got put in there, and sometimes I'll throw the that bag in there and use it kind of like a tea bag in the boil mm-hmm. kettle. Most of the time I don't have to, but I like to do that. Go soft first. And then add to it because coffee can go a little overboard. Um, and then after I've after I've boiled for a good sixty minutes, then I take my cocoa and then uh, I pass it through my work grant, which is just a, like a standalone little uh, uh, kind of tank that has a, a pour in and pour out. It has a filter on the bottom, so not so and anything that's in there won't pass into the liquid, but the liquid will pass through it. And then I throw my cocoa in there. And, you know, the cocoa kind of breaks up, you know, it's just, it's kind of like the old school cocoa where you got it in the, the tins where it's, you know, you kind of have to get a spoon or something and kind of jab it in there oh, and yeah, break yeah. it up. Yeah. Uh, and pass through that. And then, then I pass out through. You pass out because you're absolutely <laughs> yeah. wore out at this point. Right? You're ready to no, fall asleep. Then I, uh, then I pass it through a filter again, uh, throw it in my fermenter. Um, I let it ferment. Um, and then when I move to the bright tank, I test my, um, that's also where I test my, uh, lactose level. Sometimes I have to add lactose again to try and sweeten it up, kind of make that more milky yeah. mouthfeel. Okay. Uh, Cause otherwise with the, with both the coffee and the cocoa, it's think of those strong coffee flavors, strong, dark chocolate flavors that can be too bitter, especially when a bitter, uh, when a beer has already got quite a bit of bitterness to it already. So I have to kind of soften that up, and that's what the lactose does. Okay. Yeah. And there you go. That's, that's, just, your, that's crazy. That's so, a milk stout, milk so, chocolate, or so coffee milk stout. On a scale of 1 to 10, uh, is this the mo- – like, is it a very involved – like, does it take a this long one, time? This one has a lot more steps to it, yeah. And, Definitely and, a lot more labor. Most of the time I just throw a grain in the tank and throw water in there, check my temperatures, and stir it to make sure the temperature's at different levels. And then kind of, um, and then filter it and and wash it through. But that's about it. Versus, I do all of that plus I do something with the coffee, I right. do something with the cocoa, and I do something with the lactose. So on a scale of one to ten, what would you say? Like the most, like ten being your most involved brewing process. Yeah. Uh, where does where this land? Probably like eight, seven or eight. Is that is that why it's like this? I'm I'm only going to centralize it around one yeah time right. of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I, that makes I still make a big batch, but I don't make a second batch. I only do one batch of it. Gotcha. Um, I, I've got – you've hit me with a bunch of things I want to ask you. Okay. This is almost a rapid fire. We don't have to go into super detail. I mean, if this turns into two episodes, it turns into two episodes, three episodes. Who cares, right? Okay. Okay. So um, currently right now, what are you brewing? 
Like, what, like right now. Oh, so I'm I'm looking forward to um, St. Patty's Day. I'm getting ready to do my Imperial Red. Imperial Red is another one that's a, a high labor one. It takes a lot longer because it's scale ca- us real quick. High labor one. Wh- so nine. It's a nine. Okay. Um, okay. That one. Uh, my my uh, mash tun is not big enough for all the grain, so I li- I have to break it into two batches in mm-hmm. order to make one batch. So it's twice as much to make it, and on top of it, because it's an imperial, it it has twice as long a boil period, so it's a much longer, harder. That's that's the next like specialty one that I'm doing. Um, but I'm also catching up. I I still have to do. IPAs, you know, I'm still whipping out IPAs. I got that, that IPA is coming back on tap. Uh, different will go away for a little bit. That'll come back on. Um, those two have been the most popular right now. Um, and, so, and then so my light beers, your light like. beers. Okay. And then the mango peach is still super popular. Dude, that mango peach is selling. Yeah. It really, I, I'm have to just keep ruining that one too. The funny thing is, is that I walked into the grocery store the other day and it, the mango peach sounded good. And I saw it, and I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. There's a mango peach there? Like at the, trade route? I, at some grocery store. Yeah, like yeah. I, it was like a Safeway or whatever. There's someone doing there's, a, yeah, there's someone's doing a mango many. peach. Not many, not very yeah. many. Yeah. But then that night, went out with the boys, got the mango peach. So it, like, it got, I'm like, I ain't buying this, but I'm going to go to Gold Street and get it. Dang. And that night I got it. So planted, planted the seed. But I got like I got your I don't I didn't want to be disappointed right I'm like you know what I'm happy with what I have I don't want to take this thing and have it ruin it um, now that you're at Cole Street on Cole Street on Cole Street mm-hmm. how is the business the same less even though it's a pandemic yeah is so, it yeah. yeah we can talk about the pandemic thing so I mean recently they kind of changed the rules for breweries um, so saying that if you have a garage door and you roll it up. Uh, you can have people inside, which you have still, on, which you still, have on your old one, don't yeah, you? Still only twenty five percent, and I have it on my old one. Um, it's kind of a funny one of those funny things. If I roll up my garage door this time of year, it's going to be cold as crap in there. It's going right. to be like sitting outside. Right. right. Might as well just keep it outside. Right. Um, and on top of it, it's it's questionable how much traffic is going to go to my other place. Sure. This time of year, also being closed down there for so long, like I have to get that the the local neighbors and all those people to know that i'm open again yeah um i mean i still can't do events normally i do a lot of events down there i do my murder mystery and my comedy nights it's open it's open yeah right um and then also in the summertime i have the great view of the mountain i still have the great view of the mountain but people come out in the summertime to sit and look at the mountain right in the wintertime it's not as much so that being said i mean downtown sitting on cold street i mean i have pretty steady traffic every day um, weekdays are still really slow, but weekends are so great. So the weekends are popping. Yeah, it's opening that street up. I mean, yeah. So people have so a place to hang out. That's it's, that's it's a, a big thing, a huge thing. Um, with that said, so are you? Uh, so it's like, granted, we're in a pandemic, mm-hmm. but is it just? Is it a lot? Like, let's say, let's say you didn't grab that spot. Where's Cole Street Brewery? Uh, I don't think I'd still be. I don't think I'd be here. I mean. Just, yeah. It would have slowed down so much. Yeah. Because there's just not enough people getting out and then not having food down there. Having down, being downtown and having the restaurants right next to me is, is a it's huge, huge, huge bonus. Yeah. yeah. And then Be- having the-, the restaurants are, are honestly what keep our town going. If the restaurants close or, or town- more of our restaurants close, yeah. our town would just fold. Because yeah. that's what keeps uh, out of towners coming in and locals coming out to yeah. town. Good. Well, keep. Guys, keep supporting local. We talked about that last episode. Um, also on Cole Street, you guys don't know this if you're if you're not a Pokemon Go person. But uh, the other day, I'm like, you I, know what? No, I heard that podcast. <laughs> I heard you talk about it. And yes, yes. But, but let's talk about let's talk about my priorities in life. What is number one in my life? Uh, business brewery. Well, actually, number one is my dog. Okay, number dog. Yeah, you number one is okay. M- number one is my dog. My dog is twenty years old, yeah. so she's number one. But yeah. number two, still the one of the highest is right. my business. So I think everything business, right? Right. And I'm a very outside the box. Right. So and probably going to say this now. Everybody, all the other businesses are going to be like, "Oh, that's pretty decent." But um, uh, I don't know if you know this, but there's you know breweries, churches, rest, or you know they're all. Pokey stops. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I at first didn't even know what a Pokey stop was. Right. To be perfectly honest. Right. Right. But people were stopping in my outside and they're and they're playing this game and I'm like, what is going on here? You know. So I asked, 
And then the pandemic happened and I'm sitting there kind of bored as crap. Yeah. You're going to do something. <laughs> and so then, uh, so honestly I started like last March yeah. and then I started dabbling with it and I discovered like, there's a big community. There's an awful it's lot of people huge. that play Pokemon, <laughs> yeah, right? Know, yeah. And not, and you think at first kids, but there's an no, awful lot of adults, adults that do too. Yeah. So I, you know, I started adding myself to different Facebooks and stuff that are Pokemon Facebooks. And then, you know, you have like little lure things that you can throw on a Pokestop. So I say, you know, every Tuesday I got a lure going on, come out to my spot and I'll make sure that lure is going on. I'll, you know, double it up. Whatever, really? Really? You know, I do some promotions yeah. inside their community to get people out. Yeah. So it's I just, like that. For me, it was just another avenue. Yeah. But then, of course, you know, I can't just be some geek that, or some non-geek that doesn't really know what I'm even talking about. I have to, I have to have some knowledge. So then I had to start playing and and figuring stuff out. Oh, way to go! Yeah. I, st- I still yeah. don't know okay. really what I'm doing with yeah. it, but right. I do kind of know. Yeah. So here, let me. So I got sucked in by a few friends from work, uh, Janelle and Ben Illman, and this was like like 2000, like 17. And then I started like just playing. It gave me something to do during the day when it was slow. Uh, when I was off work, I mean, like what, like weekends, and. Uh, <laughs> And then I got into it. Like I went down to Oregon City, uh, well, not Oregon City, Lincoln City in Oregon. And uh, <laughs> anyway, this I guess this beer is already hitting me. Um, <laughs> good thing we're only doing a few tonight, I guess. Uh, so anyway, I'm playing it there. I it even tells you when you when you capture one of these Pokemon <laughs> that like, it's like this is where you got it. This was the date. Oh, this yeah. is where you got mm-hmm. the egg. This is what they got eggs. You hatch. You be walk around. It creates. Extras. It's a good, fun thing. So then around 2018, I went to Vegas, actually got a few more. I come back, I delete it. So I'm like, this is just taking up too much. T- <coughs> this is taking up too much storage on my phone. I hit that point. I don't know if you guys ever do that where you guys get, get your phone, you're loving and it. Stuff, yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't take any more pictures. I can't do this. Well, I'm getting rid of stuff. So I got rid of Pokemon Go. Then recently... I found my son's Pokemon collection. Base the cards. set. Yes, yep. of the cards. This is like 95, 96, 98. I'm going online. I'm see, I'm going I'm going to start sending these into grade. We're supposed to have Mariana Rivera at one point on. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't know who it is. It's like this like mystery person that's on the garage night that Corey and uh, Corey knows. And and anyway, he's like a card collector. He he ships these cards off to the PSA oh, yeah, and to yeah. Beckett and all that. So I'm gonna get his opinion. What what do you think? I'm I'm looking online. Some of these cards, if they're in ten, which mine are not, they're like five grand. The ones that are like, you know, PSA seven, they're like five hundred bucks. So it's wow. it's and I've got a shoebox full. I mean, massive amount of these things. Um, so anyway, it got big, a, big it got, grandeur. It got you think this. Oh yeah, it's da, 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 da. totally gonna be. It's <laughs> totally, sort through a thousand cards and find one. Yeah, that's what I'm but saying. It's still that one. I hope to find that's, that one. You know, that's yes, a, I hope to find that one. So uh, anyway, I got back into Pokemon mm-hmm. with that, and then so the other day I was walking through. I go to a gym, and I'm like, go put myself in a gym, and I'm like, kind of flipping through who's there. Oh. Patty Mac, and I played against a Patty Mac in Madden football, and that Patty Mac just happened to be you. So, so if you see Full Buddy Cast, the funny thing is, I I started I my guy's name is Full Buddy Cast. So, and this was again years ago. So Full Buddy Cast is out there. If you see Patty Mac, that's us. Red team both. Yeah, red team. I don't know though. I, I'm thinking I might be switching. I mean, just because you saw it, Full Buddy Cast well, at the red there, team. There's, there's so many red team and so many blue team, but there's yeah, no yellow yellows. Team. Yeah, very very little yellow. And it's so it's like I'm always I don't I, you know I want to take stuff over. I don't want to just tag along with somebody else. Yeah, we got we got off the rails on that Pokemon, but <laughs> it's fun. Okay, it's fun. I'm telling you, it gets addicting. Um, all right, I got to shout out Craig. I said like Holly Graf and like Eric Madrid, these other guys, Kellen and and Casey Scott. I Craig Bentley, you listen. Thank you, Craig Bentley's a great guy. Uh, I saw him tagged in a couple of your photos. I don't know what you commented on or shared, but yeah. I went down. L- let me let me explain <laughs> this real quick. I went down. That's not what I meant to post. It's I went down. <laughs> 
a Sean McDonald wormhole. Now, there's times in your guys' <laughs> lives where you'll watch one YouTube video and like an hour later, 10, 15 videos or Facebook video. You go down this wormhole. I went down earlier today. Just, hey, hand up. Look around the room. My hand's the one up. Did anyone go on a Sean McDonald wormhole hunt today? <laughs> I did. I saw pictures of you catching fish and fish out on the lawn. Yeah. I, I saw everything. So, so full disclosure, like I, I got a, a memory of the, the storm in like uh, 2012 yeah. where everything was frozen. And so the pictures that oh, I saw, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, and then I commented like, oh, I remember how nasty this was. And then I, po- I shared that. And then later on, somebody made some comment. And then I looked and I'm like, what is this? It shared like the whole album. Dude, the whole like, my, album. My random picture album. I was into that <laughs> album deep, man. I was, I was. <laughs> my random. Shit. I got conspiracy theories. You're, you got a whole Reddit thing going. I'm just kidding. I didn't create that. <laughs> but I'm just saying like I was in there like, oh, this. It, and you've caught, how many fish do you think be like a real realistic? Yeah. Th- just, so I, I th- mostly just catch and release, actually. So those fish that I caught, th- or those ones that were in those pictures, it was, one you, was trout, but yeah. I don't normally keep trout. And then a lot of them were salmon. My my parents are always, if I catch salmon, or most of my neighbors are like, if you catch them, we'll, we'll take them. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I you, grew up. You my, don't typically my, my keep gran- yourself. Yeah, my grandfather was president of Sportsman's Club, so so venison and salmon. We got hand me downs of that, like every like I eat. I eat. It was salmon, like, a, like it was like a Christmas. Like here's every, a big every, box full of. Well, ice with no, stuff it was like it. every four days we'd be eating <laughs> salmon, uh, salmon or venison, one or the other, and uh, I was like, oh. So in my adult life, I'm like, I enjoy catching them. I love catching a salmon, but I mostly catch and release. Yeah, yeah. So how many? If there's a stat. If I could like click on your like, like oh, I, don't, I don't know how many, how many do you think you've caught in your life? Uh, so I used to take uh, those uh, disposable cameras, thirty two yeah, pictures. Yeah. I take three of them on a trip, and you and fill them up with pretty much yeah. Couple. I take three just to make sure I could have enough. Yeah, I wouldn't always go through three, but I go through at least one and a half. Um, this so, explains so the Pokemon 30, 30, by the 40 way. 40 fish. You got to collect them all. You're catching them all. <laughs> now it's turned into. Now it's turned. Now it explains Pokemon. I got. Yeah, that was that was incredible. All right, so uh, let's get back to some things. Future of Coal Street. We kind of hinted at it, like, hey, this is looking like if this gets shut down again, this extends. Now, granted, we have like, can you? You don't have open windows. Like, like, what can you do? Can you do? That's a that's a big question. So they're also it's a funny thing that they they have in their stats. They all talk about the CO two levels. Mm-hmm. Well, what if I push my beer with CO two? So what I was thinking is, and I have so in in the courier building, I already have fan, fans built in, like kind of just to push the air around. Right, the air in there is kind of gets stagnant towards the top of the ceiling. All the heat's on the top, so I have fans just to push it around, around. right by my doors. So I can open up my doors on either side and then throw the fans on. And then if worst case scenario, if I need more CO2, I can just throw a bottle of CO2 and just kind of crack it and yeah. <laughs> throw some CO2 in the building. So are you fine? That's what it takes. I was going to say, that's what they say. They say that's what like, it takes. That's what doors do. open, windows um, open. Yeah. So I'm waiting f- to see what the restaurants do because it, it's also that questionable. Like they had said that we might be going back to 25% capacity or indoor seating. Indoor. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like we're, um, which just, is, but I haven't seen any restaurants doing that yet. So it's one of those like, Am, am I reading it wrong? Or, you know, right. That's what's so confusing right now is yeah. like, is it in our area or is this a, you know, is this just. Because a, they've got to broke us, broke us up into different groups and all that. I can right. understand the confusion on that and, and wanting to be, play it safe. Yeah. But, uh, and, and anyway, I mean, it's not like Cole Street's going to go anywhere. I feel like the way people are supporting it. And now just double down at this point. Like, just keep supporting. Right. Um, supporting all of that. Uh, so, future of Coal Street, looking like, hey, if we can start opening some things, hopefully that's that's the yeah. way to go. I'm going to start setting up the, the tap room for, like, 25%. You know, sorry, it's first come, first serve, you know, inside and outside. But, yeah. But th- that'll increase my, my seating capacity. And so, so where that'll do help you, the restaurants, too. Where do you go? Like, do you, like, will you do, like, a Monday? Are you, I mean, like, right now... 
technically Mondays and Tuesdays because it's the winter. Yeah. Summer, it's going to get seven days a week. Yeah. We get that. But right now, Mondays and Tuesdays, is it going to be at the other spot or is it just going to be like not at all? Those are your days off. Gonna Mondays, be, Mondays yeah. and Tuesdays right now, I'm just catching up on beer and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you got a lot I've, of work. <laughs> I've, gotten, I've gotten really behind on that where right. I was, I'm just, you know, barely keeping up. So... Yeah, so I've been taking off the last couple. We're going to go through January with Monday, Tuesdays off and um, reevaluate in February. I kind of go just month by month, reevaluate. See how things are at. Because I mean, read the I, room. I'm, yeah, I'm also watching the restaurants, uh, mm-hmm. how busy they are on Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah. And they're, they're still super slow mm-hmm. on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, when they only have four tables, or they it's only hard. have four tables available, but only one table has people at it, that tells you that it's, it's not very busy. That's hard. Um, all right, so this past weekend, I got to tell you the story, guys. I shared it on Facebook the other day. Chilling with my boys at Cole Street. People, I mean, it's a place where people are walking past. They're probably playing their Pokemon Go's. They're probably just catching up, going, seeing people. Campfires going. I mean, it's not just like when I say Cole, because I'm going to tell a story, and the story is going to sound like, oh, they were at Cole Street Brewery. No, no, no. Everyone's outside. Get this. All right, so I'm outside. I'm on I'm on the sidewalk, uh, kind of pushed to the side even, you know, like I'm not really even that close to the entrance. So these people walk by and this it was the younger crowd. Now I looked it up because I felt awkward. <laughs> and this is why I felt awkward was because um, this girl came up to me of the younger generation. I looked I'm like, she told me her name later or, or, or she told me her name later she left i mean when she left because again it was i'm an old man guys i got white in the beard man i call it toothpaste <laughs> but i'm an old man i'm a happily married man too and i am obviously a recognizable person right so that that's another thing at least your voices at least my voices at least my voices so she tells me you know she, this girl comes up to me and she's like hey uh you're travis kenny and i'm like yeah and I, and I, you know, I've got, my daughter's 17, right? So I'm like, oh, shoot, maybe I should know this girl because of my daughter. And she's like, uh, you're like my hero. And I'm like, Whoa. what? What? She's like, yeah, the EM Claw discussion board. And, and then and she starts talking about all this stuff. She's like, can I take a picture with you and send it oh, to my wow. mom? Oh, and wow. and because her mom's on the board too. And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. And, and so it was, it, it, so when they went away obviously my my guys are like uh i mean it was a brief conversation it was like maybe a minute and a half like it wasn't super like oh yeah 45 minutes later it was like super fast and the guys are like uh okay but i'm like listen i don't know she came up to me okay i don't know what to do i it was a very awkward thing but i did know her name and i looked her up and she was like 18 and a half so i feel like semi okay but also very weirded out so I don't even like. What do you feel like? Would, if someone came up to you and said, "Hey, you're Sean McDonald," like, do you what do you do at that point? Yeah, it does weird me out a little bit because I've always tried to just be fly under the radar. Right. Like, right. I'm well, I mean, brew, obviously, I'm the brewmaster. I, I right. stay in the back and just brew the beer. And I just but. fly all over. I don't fly under the radar. I fly all over. Some days I'm <laughs> under the radar. Sometimes I'm above. But anyway, it was just like one of those things where it was like, I wish she was older. Like I wish she was like 30. <laughs> and she said Travis Kenny, and I'm like, oh yeah, I am. When she when it was a younger generation, but then I thought kids need heroes too, and I was a hero there. there you so go. there you go. I'm there you go. You guys be. She's going to start her own <laughs> Eden Claw Gazette. <laughs> She's on it actually. She's on it because she said I wanted to know. I didn't know. I, I it was it was a weird thing, but but it was cool. It's very very uh, what what do you call that? Like flattering. It was like oh I guess guess I'm funny to somebody else. Yeah, Maybe it's just sure. me. My kids don't think I'm funny. Um, <laughs> all right. Next thing. Next thing. Next thing. Uh, 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 if you were not brewing, let's say that take the brewing out. I may have asked this question like out before. Out of my life? Or? Out of your life. Okay. If you weren't brewing, where do you think you would be? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What's What would be like maybe your other passion that you might be living out or well, I, I mean, I grew up on a farm, and I've I have always loved farming. It's just farming's just such a, you know, I love farming and the fact that you get out there, you get your hands dirty, you put the effort in, you see it grow, 
you see the end result and you go, man, yeah, that's, that's, that's my, that's my piece of land that I did that. I've always loved that. But on the flip side, just farming is that all the time It is always a really hard and it's really hard to make it, you know, unless you're completely living off of it. But in this day and age, you can't necessarily only live off of that. Yeah. So what, so would you be, is that what you'd be doing you think, or would you be, are you a businessman? Cause I feel like you're a businessman. I mean, obviously you're a brewer, but you're also well, a businessman. I have thought of that too. It's like, you know, when all this pandemic happened and all that and just, uh, you know, jumping state and going somewhere else and then just opening a tap room. I can talk beer for days. I know everything and I know all the really great breweries and I have good connections with a lot of breweries. So just having a tap house and just doing just strictly you still, that. You still Chris. But, you're like, hey, Chris, I'll be right back. <laughs> the, just going to the grocery store to get some milk. But at the same time, <laughs> I, never I, show back I think I might get frustrated, too, where I'm, like, trying to get people's beers. And I'm like, damn it, I could just – I could do it myself. And then I yes. just end up starting my own brew. Just doing it again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like Johnny Appleseed. The Johnny I, Appleseed of I definitely, beers. you know, I would never not have beer in my life again. You know, I could not live without beer in beer my life. Beer again. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, it sounds like it's – it's it's nerf or nothing. It's beer or nothing. Like you would be either you'd be I'm not saying nothing is farming, but uh, but you'd be either farming. Like you don't think you're you can, bit- you can farm and beer and brew. At the but same what time. I'm saying is like <laughs> what like what would you do? Like what like let's just say let's take farming out. I'm going to take farming out. Where do you see like your where does your brain go? Is it is it into politics? Is it into business? Oh, no. Is it into politics? Would frustrate the crap. Would out you of be me a grunt it, worker somewhere? Just like. Uh, I don't think I could work for somebody else. Anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, so you're, so I'm basically what I'm hearing is you'd be doing something business wise. Yeah. Calling your own it de- shots. It's the definitely, best you can. it would definitely be easier to take orders rather or take direction rather than give direction. But I don't think I could ever do that again. Yeah. So I just get frustrated. Cause you know, you'd be able to either figure it out or yeah. you know, better, a better route of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, all right. We've got, hikes coming up spring's gonna start springing here pretty soon we already get some little warmer weather we had some we got snow in the forecast this is this is where we get in that weird wild weather ways yeah, sure. of washington state a lot of w's in that one um so as it starts to unthaw and people get that real quick like ooh, it's 57 today um i'm gonna go hit mount peak i'm gonna go hike i'm gonna go outdoors i'm gonna go and quickly enjoy this um, and we don't have crawlers yet because aluminum shortage. But uh, when those come it's getting, back, it's getting closer. What is the beer that you like to take on a hike? What is the, that like? I'm well, going to go hit the road for, you know. Spring flavor is, you know, the raspberries come on. They're the first fruit. Uh, nice, like, frambuesque type flavor. Mm-hmm. It's kind of zippy. It's light. Um, and then right after that is the the basil, the honey basil. I love the honey basil. That's another good solid beer it's kind of unique it's a really great you know aromatic and you know good rounded beer so do you take then um are those like harder abvs lower abvs no, they... middle of the road so do you when you go on a hike because obviously you don't want to be you want to remember where you parked and come back on that <laughs> hike um, yeah but you're burning calories so the you know get in a little boost i like to point out too there was a study this is several years back um so people you know get lost in the wilderness and exposed in the the you know, the hardest thing is the exposure that they get, mm-hmm. right? Um, so they did a test on uh, what's the best thing to, when you get to that person, you know, there's those, the old dogs, the Beethovens with yeah, the whiskey little, or whatever. Yeah. That kind of true, kind of not. But um, they did a test um, and beer was one of the top things, like uh, like an immediate, like water and, and nutrients to your system. Yeah. Now, like overall, like uh, a water or a Gatorade is, is better for overall like longer periods of getting that to them but just the immediate like getting some beer in their system is like a good thing so taking a beer on a you know so i just use that as an example of a good thing to bring on a hike is you know you're back up like i'm kind of kind of getting tired up here i need a little boost there you go and if you come across somebody who's been stuck out there for yeah four days boom give them a little jolt (laughs) (laughs) here's some beer You can walk on uh, that broken leg. You guys got this now. <laughs> got the beer. Um, where's your favorite place to go spring hiking? Uh, spring hiking. I don't know. I've always liked going up Malwich. I mean, that's a good area. Um, it does kind of, you know, gets pretty busy up in there. Yeah. Um, but just out 
past Wilkinson and that sort of area. Like, there's good chanterelle out there, but that's more of a fall. But wait, chant is that mushrooms? Yes. What? Okay. <laughs> the only reason is I'm about to release an episode with uh, about you know Sarah Johnson and and, uh-huh. and mushrooms come up. Now I don't know if it's the same mushrooms, but um, most likely it's it's either chan- chanterelles are the most common one or morels. Morels are a little harder to find. There's all there's all kinds hunt? of people hunt. There's all kinds of mushrooms, but those are the most commonly hunted. Do you ones. catch and release any of the, of the <laughs> mushrooms? No, no, you don't. You just, you no, that's a that's a that's a put it in the pocket <laughs> and take it home. <laughs> I got mushroom pockets. <laughs> uh, all right, last last topic. Okay, uh-huh. this happened uh, to me like three days ago. And I don't know if you guys know this. I got two. I got robes for Christmas. I got sweats for Christmas because of the pandemic. My like my jeans and my slacks that I would normally get for Christmas because that's what you would kind of wear out throughout the year, and then you want to get new ones. My sweats were the ones getting worn out, so I, I got new a bunch of new sweats uh, from my wife, and I've, so I've been wearing those lately a ton. In fact, I've been wearing them like for the past like six months, like basketball shorts during the summer, and then. Yesterday, I decided I had the day off. I decided I'm going to throw on some jeans and a shirt and socks, not just wear slippers and like it was socks oh, wow. and, sh- and shoes that dressed up Oof. some Romeos, in fact. And I tell you, as soon as I put that outfit together, I felt like Captain Planet, dude. I felt like all the rings hit together. I was ready to like do anything. So I refilled the woodshed i actually replaced a toilet i was ready in my mind i'm like i'm gonna start weed eating i'm gonna start mowing i'm gonna start doing all like i'm like ready to just like work i'm in my work outfit i'm and it's so foreign to me because i've been just in these slobby sweats for the past several months um so then it got me thinking about a work outfit that true where you wake up in the morning and you know that you're going to, and, and for some people, maybe it's a business outfit that you know that you're looking just dapper and you're ready to hit that boardroom meeting, or maybe you're uh, a laborer and you're going to go out and you're just going to just like, you know, you're going to get dirty, but you're going to be comfortable. You got your comfortable, dirty clothes that you're going to get, get dirty in. Um, and so then I started thinking about what I would ask my hosts that are on my other shows and brouhaha obviously is one of those. And I wanted to think of like, what do you have that ideal? I'm gonna go brew outfit, like, or or do you? Are you like? It is kind of a funny thing because I grew up on a farm, so I still have, I have bins, you know, I have like Rubbermaid bins that are all my quote unquote work clothes. Yeah, but half the time it's the same as my. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if if you see me around, I wear Carhartt jeans like yeah. day in day out. Yeah, hoodies, Carhartts, t-shirts, t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you, so so your only I, thing that changes are my shoes. Like when I'm brewing, I wear boots. Okay, I wear shoes. The, the, the whatever, the ones that you and Joey were talking about. The XRT. I call them. I call them jersey boots. They're like brown, but they're the. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah I don't know. They're super common. Um, when you're cleaning, are you? Do you have to like throw on like a like some sort of like <laughs> asthma or something? Yeah, I'm supposed to, but. Should we cut that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's, a, it's fine. I, I mean, you know, yeah, you use some chemicals in certain situations, and, you know, uh, I, I, wear, I wear gloves. <laughs> you got the gloves, at least. <laughs> yeah. And the mask. <laughs> sure. I, I, I have a beard. <laughs> That's true. The mask. Yeah. Mask for days. Um, were there any other questions or anything that you had coming in from other people? Did they hit other than blindfold me or anything? Yeah, no, just to talk about the, um, well, you know, just talk about different beers. So I'm going to start being a little more clear on the separations on beers and how they're, how they're different along the lines. Um, I mean, the easiest thing is at my brewery, I, I should get another one for the carrier building is like having a board because everybody, they're like, oh, well, is this an ale? Well, yeah, it is, but that doesn't. Ale is a wide term. There's a lot of beers that are ales. So then they always say, well, is this like, and I can go to the board and go, well, kind of, this is over here. That's a great connected idea. Connected to that. So so through the lineage, yeah, it's connected, but it's not like brother, sister. It's like cousins. That's you know? a great. Second so cousins. Here is my, because I can, I can understand that. So here's my, uh, rec- here's my suggestion. Okay. As a, as a friend of friend, right. Back in the day, uh, 
when my parents would take me to the Christian bookstore and we would buy music. Now, obviously, my parents didn't like the Tupac and they didn't like <laughs> the Notorious B.I.G. and the Wu-Tang and, and the Buster Rock. They didn't like that. So they were always like, hey, let's get you some. But they had no clue. Like, let's get you some Christian rap that sounds like them. But they had no clue. And what do you know, ask this person who probably is just a teenage kid who's just working there for like the yeah. summer? Yeah. They had a poster on the wall that said, if you like this... You will like this. If yeah. you like the, if you like Wu Tang, you're gonna like God's Originals Gangsters or something. You know, like you would. It, it may be. I'm not saying you should do that, but I love that idea of a board so that you don't have to keep answering the same questions every time they come yeah, up. Sure. Um, as much as you want to, I right? Can, yeah, I can put examples next to it. This this you know Vienna Lager is you know an example would be Dos Equis and you yeah, know, this, that's the same beer. So you know, yeah, something. If you like this taste, because do you how many times a night? Where you get somebody new. I'm not talking yeah. like they, just like the regulars. They come in. That's the you know the common question is like, well, what should I get? And I'm like, well, what do you normally drink? Right. And as soon as they spit that out, it's it's funny because they always spit out like six things, and and <laughs> like four of them are the same thing. So it's like, okay, so you want this yeah. right here? It's right. like you know, um, and that's the easiest way for me because I I know I know right. those beers, and you know they may not know what that style actually is, you know. They're always like Mac and Jacks. Well, it's Mac and Jack African Amber. Yeah. And Mac and Jack is actually a brewery, so they make a lot of different beers. Sure. But I just know when they say Mac and Jack, they mean the, they mean the, the amber African ale. Amber. Yeah. And I have an amber that's very similar to that. And which, and if you're going to start opening up the second location, you're going to probably want – you're not going to be able to be at both places at both times, yeah. right? And you're going to have to well, rely that, off of the, your – Well, that's where my staff – we have you know we have training. We, we, get, we get after it and okay. drink some beers. All right, I like that. I make sure that my staff. They get out. You get out like that. <laughs> we get after it. Okay, last thing before we get into shout outs. What if someone sees you and you're busy? I'm telling you guys, if you guys see Sean, but if you see him busy, I'm telling you, he's running, he's he's grabbing food for people, he's grabbing drinks for people, he's doing whatever he can do uh, to just keep rolling. Uh, do you want? I, I know that as a as a friend and as a business owner, as a, you want to create that connection, but you also might be in the middle of something and got like twelve other things that you got to do at the same. Like, you know, once you get done with that thing, um, it depends on the day of the week. There's a I have an awful lot of time, or I have extra time. Okay, uh, so obviously, if I have a line, my, my I have this OCD thing about lines. I hate lines. Right, so you're anytime I have a line, them, I got to get, get that through, line get through, done. Get yeah. So, uh, do you say something? specifically to like hey i love you but i'm busy or like, like what like what do you do you usually kind of like say hey man thanks for coming out but i've got like i don't uh, know if you see this no but. i've never i've never i never do that i don't know yeah. i try and conversate so yeah i can i always tell people i have eight hands so you you tell me how many beer what beer you want i can pour it <laughs> yeah. and i can talk at the same time so gotcha. kind of just having people kind of just slide down the bar i can still have a conversation with you while you're standing at the bar while i'm filling the next person's beers that sort of thing and when people talk to you do you like the conversations about the beer the brewery or about like are i'm you, wide open you're I mean, wide open yeah uh, i've been a bartender for a long time so I, i've heard a lot, a lot of different <laughs> a, lot, a lot of sob stories and a lot of fun stories it, it's yeah you know, Sure. It's part, it's part of being a barman. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do shout outs then. Um, I'm going to do my shout out. So give you some time to think about yours. <laughs> okay. Does, that, does that work for you? Sure. All right. I'm going to shout out uh, um, a few people that, well, Shekinah, I work with her. She's come down to the Bordeaux Wine Bar um, in the past for some live ones. But now she's coming down to Cole Street Brewery a lot more as well. And so I want to shout out her. Uh, she's a friend of, uh, you know, work friend, uh, you know, my son plays with her son kind of a thing. Anyway, uh, it, it like gives me joy when I, when, you know, you kind of have your work friends where you're like, Hey, what are you doing this weekend? You know, or how was last weekend? And it's like, um, they they will mention, oh, I'm planning on going to Cole Street, or I just got back from Cole Street Brewery. You know, like, oh yeah, like Saturday I was at Cole Street Brewery. Like when I hear that, that like makes me like thrilled. I don't know why it does so much. Obviously, because we're friends, and I want to just like know. I'm like no, like sweet people are getting out there and, and hitting yeah. it up. So, um, if you hit up Cole Street Brewery and you're too afraid to use the podcast, I understand. 
that's a weird like do i mention full body cast do i mention brouhaha sean and i would love it if you did absolutely but sean is also cool with you like if you don't just, want if you don't want to check in at the brewery yeah if you yeah. Ch- check in um if you don't want to put full body cast in there don't worry about it uh maybe whisper it to him but check in at the brewery uh but it, you know the thing is i want to know I'm super thrilled when I hear that someone goes to Full Body Cast or to uh, Cold Street Brewery because of Full Body Cast. I love other. I'm going to shout out my host, Sean McDonald. He went to Mazatlan, <laughs> bought a Hollenbeck Chalupa, took a picture of it, tagged Full Body Cast. He tagged Andy Cardenas. He tagged me. He tagged Joey. Yes, sir. And that and and that was. It's a tasty again. treat. I should have taken pictures too. I was clean plate club. <laughs> was, uh, I don't know. I was I was pretty hungry because at first I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this down, but I did. <laughs> yeah, it it uh, it absolutely thr- it, it thrilled me. So thank you very much for supporting the podcast, supporting Mazatlan. I know that you always well, support I local. Always, yeah, and I yeah. Always support Andy. Yeah, yep, and support good Andy for sure. So anyway. Uh, do you got your do you got your shout outs yet? Sure. Okay. I'd like to shout out Steve from Double uh, A Transmission. It's right off of uh, Porter Street, so it's yeah. it's kind of on that kind of tricky corner it that has is. like a flashing light sort of thing. Yeah. Um, he's been there for a long time. He lives right above his shop. Um, he does you know great transmission work. Uh, but I just know him from uh, he's been helping out downtown. I mean, he comes down every Sunday night when I go to open the street back up. <laughs> You know, he comes in and grabs a beer and then goes out and he's been, you know, pulling those those fire tables off the off the street, which is really appreciative. I mean, we've expanded it. I don't know if you noticed, we we've taken over the other side of um, Griffin. So uh, both sides of Cole Street are shut down from Friday to um, Sunday. Um, the farmer's market is in the in the Kelly Mercantile building, which is an additional block that's only shut down on Fridays. Um but basically the whole middle section of Cole Street is shut down on the weekends now. Come on down. Yeah, come down. Hey, Every how weekend. old is Steve? Is he, has he been there for a while? Yes. Now, uh, wait, yeah, yeah. He's how, mid, mid-50s, okay. early 60s. I remember as a kid, and this is where people – here's the thing. I don't know if he owned it before or who had it before. I'm pretty sure he's been the whole time. Because when I was a kid – it's also the one that's always broken, like breaks his hand and his leg. And oh, really? <laughs> we would drive by there, and they had like this, like stuffed. They would have like a stuffed, uh, almost like a oh, dummy. Yeah, that's right. And it would like be like in the hood of a of a yeah. car or something like that. that. That was a joke when he kept getting broken. Like, oh, really? Different things. Yeah, he's <laughs> broke so many different things just randomly, and it's not all like working on a car, but it's just random stuff slipping or you know stuff something happening. I just remember that because I remember being a kid. Now, when I say kid, I mean maybe 10, 11, 12, But it was still where I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. Like as a kid, I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's so he was. That was probably him back because because it, it was a joke. Kind of his friends, you yeah. know, like, oh, shut the hood. This is what happens to you all the time. <laughs> Do it to the dummy, not yourself this time. Uh, but, but, yeah, yeah. made for good advertising, too. That is. It sticks it's in stuck, your dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, always, I, I still will drive by there and, like, is he, is he going to do it again? Is it, is it new owners? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Um, but that's cool. Well, right on. Thanks. Uh, that's way cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Maybe we can take Steve in it and so we can hear this. Uh, cool. But, everyone, thanks so much for listening. Appreciate you, Sean. Uh, hit up Cole Street Brewery, please. Go say hi to Sean. Tag yourself in it if you want. Whisper full buddy cast to him if you if you want as well. A brouhaha if you're a little timid. But that would be awesome. Go take your picture. Go catch your Pokemon. And uh, and go say hi to, uh, to Sean or Chris. And remember to keep it local. Keep it local. Support local even after Christmas. Yep. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great week, a great day. Cheers. And take care. Making your way Cheers. in the world today. You really need a pod. Why don't you put your headphones in and give this one a shot? Wouldn't you like to just listen away? And go to a place where everybody knows who you are. Listen to two guys brew, ha ha. Cold Street Brewery and Full Buddy Cast. Two of the greatest names Why don't you go and listen to this episode?